Here we are in season four, Stand Up Memories. Don't start. I am I Peter Bales. I really Bales. thought you were going to have something special to start the new season. So since you don't, I do. Okay. I, I know it. that this won't air for a long time, but today the trailer to the documentary Joke Man was dropped on ComingSoon.com. And we have release date of July 18th, which might be in the past by the time this airs. But I'm very, very excited. And it seems like there's actually some excitement throughout uh, my block. <laughs> but uh, that is my big news. That's how you start a That's show. That's how you start a show That's with a plug. For Are you ever going to introduce the guest? You know we have a guest. We have a guest. I haven't introduced you or me yet. Peter Bales, Jackie the Joke Man Martling, and what a great guest we have today. Well, uh, you don't have to say that. I'm, I'm good, but I, I don't you're know. You're not a guest. Saying. You're, uh, we're co-hosts. That was such a stupid, that, that was even stupid for me to say. Yeah, it was. We have a terrific comedian who's been around as long as we have, a great friend. The problem with this guy, well, first of all, when I first heard that I was going to meet Bill McCarty, I, I couldn't wait to meet Paul McCartney's brother, and then oh, I found Bill out. Bill McCarty. Yeah. and that, Bill McCarty. So is right here. away he broke his leg before I met him. But we go back so far with him that it's going to be impossible to talk to him because all the stories are not really repeatable on the air <laughs> or are so inside they shouldn't be repeated on the air. But I don't care. And there's one particular story that I have gone back and forth about 15 times just since the car. But knowing me, I'm probably going to tell it anyway, and he's probably worried I'm going to tell it anyway. Well, we can start. Why don't you introduce him? Ladies and gentlemen, Bill McCarty. Thank you for being here, Bill. Thank you for asking me. The first episode of the fourth season? I, I am honored. Is this the first episode? No. No. It's not oh, the it's first not episode. It it's well, you made it sound like it. This is <laughs> welcome episode. to season four. Yeah, season welcome four. to season four. It's, you look, it, it you weird. look like the last time I saw you. Not that you look good then. No, but no, you you have not aged. You look fantastic. He does. He wouldn't okay. shake my hand. Maybe that's why. That's, that's because he is doing his impression of Howie Mandel. There you go. He doesn't want to get sick. He do, he doesn't want to get colds. And 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 I gotta say, I I love. I've seen your show. I I love the studio. It's kind of a combination. Comedy Club Panic Room. It's a very nice. Thank you. Whatever you would call it. But we know Bill going back to the comic strip. And I want to say the name of this place first on this podcast today. Uh, Mustache Pete's. Let's start our jump off oh point my. with that, Mustache Pete's. You, Pete's. you know how far back that goes? For me, there was a place called the Rainy Night House in Queens. Sure. Where we all worked. It was a kind of a variety show. Vic had kind of, but it was, it became more and more just comedians. Now, must, uh, Mustache Pete's is a, is a comedy club in New Jersey. Right. The Rainy Night House was a comedy club in Queens. Queens. On Union Turnpike in Queens. And the owner was also the cook. And, he, oh, and his name was Vic. And he was the greatest character. And that was my first, I, that was in January of 79. I call that my start date in comedy because they actually handed me $20. But instead of playing guitar and telling jokes, I was telling jokes and playing guitar. And it was so exciting. And there's great stories that came out of that, of course. That was in the days when you'd be doing so bad so the other guys would send up notes like, hey, you know, you got the <laughs> smallest penis in show, but, you know. And Well, I think <clears throat> you're probably the only one who got that note. So... <laughs> I Xerox and gave it to everybody, but we, that was with dick jokes this early this in the show. Early in we the don't show. wait for right. nothing. So Ron Richards, who was a comic, very funny comic back then, he used to do what I did was take an amplifier and go to bars and put on shows and invite the comics and make some money as a producer. And he had too many gigs. And he said, I have this place in New Jersey. Would you like to take it over? And it was called Mustache Pete's in Haskell, New Jersey. And I still have, I Xerox, the, I mean, scan the pages from Ron's book, we actually see Ron's handwriting segue, segue into my handwriting and the names, McCarty, Bales, Murphy, Seinfeld, Overton. Riser. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like a blast from the past. And that's, I, that might even been, I don't know if I met you. I know you guys knew each other, but I don't yeah. know where we, specifically. We knew each other. We started out the comic strip on 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. Yep. 
And a lot of new comics and a lot of people who want to be comedians and are thinking of trying it out um, need to know that you can get an amp and you can get a mic and you can find a place and you can And people are get doing that more. Time. I'm hearing about more and more of these more things More and are more people up. are doing it. They're popping up all over the place. But, but now they have to bring the audience with them. Now they ha now I think they're expected to show up with like 10 I don't know about you people. but one of the heartbreaking things in the course of being in comedy was the first time I heard it's a bringer show and right. so what's a bringer show that means you got to bring 10 you people gotta, with you, you have to bring and the then audience. you get to go on stage right. I'm like somewhere along the line things got switched around that's not you know things why don't you just put the audience around. on stage and sit and you know but you don't have to be a bringer if you're the one with the amp and the mic and you found the bar that's good if it's your football it's your you football, get to start you get to start well back in <laughs> the day if you had the car and then a car was very a very car important. would help you I had the car and the amp so I was sitting you pretty were, you were king of the hill <clears throat> I was king now, of the hill. for those of you watching who are new comics or thinking about going into comedy I tell don't Look for Mustache Pete's. It's not there anymore. Yeah, any, anything we're talking about is long gone, probably. Jesus. <laughs> yes. Now, I tell new comics to stay away from, from religious material because I was at Mustache Pete's. <laughs> Mr. Bill McCarty That's was right. on stage. He did a joke about his Catholic school upbringing. That's right. And a glass flew out flew of the audience the and missed him by a foot. And broke against the back wall. Yeah. Do you, what is your memory of that? It, th this was my version of Altamont. I mean, <laughs> Jeez. Now, I'm sure I booked that, but I, I don't. I'm sure I wasn't there I, I because I would remember that. I remember. Oh, yeah. it. I had. I had a. I had my. <clears throat> a lot of my early stuff was was Catholic school slash. You know. Yes. Religious satire, very influenced by George Carlin, I guess. And, and, and one time at Mustache Pete's, a guy threw a glass at me. Wow. And, yeah, and it shattered against the back wall, and the room just went cold. And the guy immediately realized he'd done something just Maybe horrible. he shouldn't have done. That maybe, and he just like, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm leaving. They didn't even have to escort him out. He took himself out. All was, these years, yeah. I've never been at a show or been on stage and had anything thrown. The only time anybody ever threw anything at the stage, I was on stage with my guitar at Neptune's Pub, and the guys used to come up because there was no place else to go, like 1978, and Eddie Murphy was on stage, and somebody crumbled up a napkin and threw it at him, and I said to the guys, come on, we're getting out of here, and we left. And the owner was like, what are you doing? I said, nobody's throwing stuff at the comedians, and he hired us back for the next week for more money. But that, you know, that's, I, I, that's a very rare occurrence. Is that it, something you... No, it's 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 rare. I saw a glass, but knock on wood. I hate to say I that. I saw a glass you know, thrown at uh, Jerry Seinfeld <clears throat> at Catch a Rising Star. Well, why'd time. you throw it? I didn't throw it. Uh, it it's very very rare. And I, I finished my set. I mean, I he it's, did. He it's finished funny. his set. I got set. real calm about the whole thing, but but yeah. Wow. But and the reason I think is because people get very emotional and take religion very personally, and uh, and that can happen. That kind of a thing can happen. Uh, but I'll never forget it. I saw the whole, well, I saw the aftermath from under a table. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, but he finished. I think we knew that. <laughs> uh, now, I, I'm going to tell you how good my memory is. Okay. <clears throat> Probably because I worked with Bill so many, so many damn times. We worked in Florida together. We worked in Florida, which is, uh, the health story will follow this. Uh, the trouble with, the, nobody's ever written a book about the Fort Lauderdale comics trip because uh, we all have ex-wives, girlfriends, and family. <laughs> so nobody <laughs> really wants to tell the tales. But I remember Bill Zack so well. This is from his act, and he can tell me if I'm wrong. You know what I hate at Disney World? That damn, it's a small world ride. I hate it. Makes me want to kill somebody. It's a small world. It's a small world. And in Chinese, they sing it in every language. Chinese, it's a small world. It's a small world. And then, and then in Italian, it's a small world. It's a small world. Polish, strangers in the night. <laughs> is, that, is that right? That's, I remember that right. joke. That I remember that joke. That is it indeed. I, I, I think now it's actually in the realm of politically incorrect. To do might, that kind of is, that, is that still there, do you think? 
The It's a Small World? Right? No, I mean in Iraq. In Iraq. No, do you, think the, do you think the ride is still there? I think the ride is still there. Oh, the ride is still there, Probably. definitely. Oh, God. That, Although I did, it, you know, I did read that they're going to revamp the thing, that they're actually taking it out. It's been there. I was on Oh, yeah, they're not going to change it to, like, It's a Crap World. I, I don't know what they're going to do, but um, <laughs> it's, it's an artificial intelligence world. But I remember going on that in the 1964 <clears throat> World's Fair. I mean, I knew it from right, right, right. Very, wow. very young. But one of my favorite memories from the road, you and I worked in, in Fort Lauderdale. And by the way, no one's written a book about Lauderdale, but I actually wrote a play called Hell, Hell Gig. Gig. Yeah, it's set that. in the condo at Lauderdale. It's about time that got produced, don't you think? I, I would love to see it produced. I, I, I We're going to do it right so, here. I came so close to a production at is it a, Is it a one room? It's a one set. We'll do it right here. You could practically the do it here. The condo? Look for it. At Fort the Lauderdale, Lauderdale, for the Fort Lauderdale comic strip, which was a club in the heyday of stand-up comedy in the early 80s, uh, where comics went to misbehave. What is it with young comedians on the road behaving oh, horribly? They're really young look- guys with lots of adrenaline and lots of testosterone <laughs> put in a position where it's easy to meet women. That's not a hard th- the math is quite simple. But, I mean, you'd show up, and the first thing you go, you go, oh, well, the patio furniture is at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> you know, and they'd say, well, of course, because, you know, Michael Hampton, Kane, and Schiff were here last week, so they had to take home movies at the bottom of the pool. A couple of comedians. The, I think we've told the story, I've told the story in the air, but the reason it's called a comedy condo is because when Richie Tinkin, who owned both comic strips in Fort Lauderdale and New York City, when he first opened the comic strip in Fort Lauderdale, he rented a condominium for the comics. And within a couple of weeks, they were so loud and noisy and obnoxious, they got thrown out of the condo. So he had to actually buy an actual duplex house, and half yeah. was for him and the other owners. And you know, the half, <clears throat> it wasn't a condo, it was, it was half of a house, but the name Comedy Condo. And, and then it became, if you stayed at the waitress's house in Richmond, that was the comedy condo, which I think is so interesting. Now, what was the name of your play? Hell Gig. I think it could have been titled Debauchery. I mean, <laughs> what, what were we thinking? Um, no rules. No and, rules. And, and, and it, it, was very, it was an odd thing writing it. It, was, it took, I don't know, however many months it took. But it was that classic thing if you start writing something and then the characters took over. And, and the, the main character wound up being very much... I started it with three guys, and then at some point I thought, what if one of these guys was a woman? And then the woman became Abby, Abby Stein. Abby Stein, and, the late Abby and, Stein. And, and, terrific and it was an homage comedian. to her, sort of. It wasn't exactly her. She sort of, you know, I, I put a bunch of things well, in. Right, every, Abby everything is party like, with the big boys, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Yeah. And but, she uh, was so nice and so wonderful. So the worst story about our dear friend William McCarty. <clears throat> We were all pretty crazy, and we were all doing pretty well. But McCarty was not having a fiesta with the ladies. He just wasn't. And we had a bunch of people over the house, of course, one night. And this (laughs) very, very wild girl, I won't mention her by name, but anybody that ever was in Fort Lauderdale at the comic strip knows who I'm talking about. She was there with one of her girlfriends who were all... Uh, a partiers, I guess, is a fun word. And I said, I got to help McCarty. And I said, come on, Bill. <laughs> and I pushed Bill and this girl into the end bedroom and closed the door. And then I fooled around with a girlfriend. <clears throat> and about a half an hour later, Bill comes out of the room, and I'm feeling so proud of myself because I, I did him a solid. I did him a solid. And the girls, thank you, girls. These are girls that... They would run out of the place sometimes because the girl's older brother was a mobster and they were driving up and down the street looking for her car because they were going to shoot that place. You know, these stories are not believable. This so is they leave every time I hear it. They leave and I said to Bill, well, thank God, you know, we, we got you, we got you some action. And he says, I didn't get near her. I said, come on, what? And he said, no, all she did would sit there and tell me how she had, however we would want to say, uh, performed the finest of favors on over 2,000 guys. 
and I didn't get near. And I said to him, Bill, why, why didn't you just hum the theme song to 2001? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, and I swear to God, he said, Jackie, I don't think if I walked out in the rain, I'd get wet. And I said, no, Bill, if you went out in the fog, you wouldn't get damp. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got drunk. Now, is that accurate? 2,000 guys. That, well, that's what she said. Those she was, are Wilt Chamberlain numbers. People would say Those she's bragging. Th I'm betting that it was 3,000 and she was trying to make herself look better. <laughs> I, I, know you, I know you said that number because else I, I wouldn't have said the number I said. You have told me this story before every time. It grows in the tell. <laughs> it can't, I'm it, sure there's a kernel of truth somewhere. It can't, it, but the number 2,000 is the, is the focal point of the story. Well, I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but it was absolutely true. And we had you, so much Bill, fun you then. not and, getting anything with this girl is totally believable for those of us. That is, that is truly believable. I'll tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell <laughs> you but other people would walk into the room and trip over something, and the next thing you knew, she was on top of them. You know, so it was like, uh, it was quite a feat. Congratulations. How did you fun. miss out on that? That's He's I, Catholic. We had fun. Go. He we won't had, shake hands. We had fun back in those days. We made wonderful memories. We were doing stand-up comedy. And, I, you know, I wonder about the young comics today. Do they behave the same way? Would somebody send me a message? Yeah, there really is. <clears throat> Let me know. I mean, what are younger comics now better behaved than we were? Not only that between politically correctness and Me Too and all that stuff, plus everything you read is that people aren't having sex anymore, which which makes me nuts that the kids that are 25 or 20 years old, they, they're just not interested. I'm like, what planet are they from? I don't think that's true with all the young comics. I know a bunch that will do anything with anybody but are, for are, a quarter. Are there still <laughs> the away, you know, <clears throat> it's hard to remember but when we were there, if the three of us were at the Fort Lauderdale comic strip together, there wasn't a headliner and a middle act. You no. know, it was like Rotate. whoever went. And I usually went last only because I was loud and filthy. So it made no sense to, to go on after me. But that wasn't until years later that it became opening act, middle act, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know if the guys travel in, you know, there, there was such a camaraderie, which is what led to our craziness. You know what I mean? Yes, and we have that bond even to this day. Bill and I started at the comic strip. We used to go on stage after two o'clock in yeah, the morning we, sometimes. We would go on very late. Four, I mean, that was, four people or even yeah, two people. Yeah, and, and there was a thing, you know, I know you teach a comedy class. Yes, I do teach a, a comedy class. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you, Jackie. I Why don't you tell them where it is? StandUpUniversity.com. Well, I have, have a documentary a... called Joke Man. All right. We have a guest. I have a play. <laughs> he has Hell a play. Game. Look for it. <laughs> it's, you won't find Tell him about your stupid thing. Te te tell us. Oh, no, it's it's StandUpUniversity.com, a comedy class, seven weeks at the Brokerage Comedy Club, Belmore, Long Island. Check us out. Thank you, and, Bill. And it's free now, right? It's not free. <laughs> it's not free. I, I didn't no, know no. I was teeing you up. You were teeing a, me up. For a promo piece You were teeing lives, me up. But, he lives but, for that. And I, I live for him to get teed up. But back in those days, the comic strip and other clubs like Catch a Rising Star and like the, the improv. improv, the original big three mm -hmm. in New York City, were developing comedians after the schedule ran out and after most of the audience left, they would put people on as, as long as there were breathing as long bodies. As there were people there. And, and New York was very much a 24-hour town then. New yeah. York is really not quite like, I don't think the clubs go. No, they don't. When you left there, it's to. not like the night was over. You would, that was stage one. And, and yeah. People would blow into the comic strip at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It was a different time. Everything's early, everything shuts down early. And the Catch a Rising Star at, at uh, on the weekends, when it was still crowded and it was late, they used to send up Gilbert to clear right. the place to out because right. he out. was so outrageous. And Gilbert nobody, Godfrey. Nobody knew what planet he's, he passed away, but he was the funniest guy in the world. But he was from Pluto. He was the funniest then. person in the world to people who got him. A good portion of the audience had no get, idea. Had and no they, idea. You know. But when Gilbert went on, the rest of the comics would go in yeah. the room to watch him because he'd always, you know, Gilbert could have gone on. 
at any time he wanted, prime time, whatever he wanted. He could have gone at 10 o'clock, 10.30, whatever. Gilbert wanted to go on at 2 in the morning for Buddy Mantilla sitting yes, in the right. room yes. and the rest and of And the us. other comics. Yeah. Crazy and he, thing. And he was wonderful. And, uh, and, and you know, God How do you him. look back at starting out? You're young. It's like 1980. I was there, you were there, others were there, going on at two o'clock in the morning. Well, when I really started, it, I guess in 77 or 78, I, I was just, by the time I met you, you know, I'd, I'd passed at the comic strip. Jerry Seinfeld had invited me to come and hang out and be a comic. But, but for the first six months to a year, I, I could not buy a laugh on stage. I was, I was in a state of utter panic don't I had don't no you look back i, I know doing. i look back how did we even have the balls to go up there i don't know it's <clears throat> you a know. mystery to me because i guess i still i got scared saturday night to, but you, you were know. in a you were in a band <clears throat> i mean you had that thing to fall back on you had that experience but I that really, is such a different world to play the guitar I even and plus you know we told jokes but i had a partner so if i'm eating it you turn your head and the whole focus goes to somebody else when it's just you. There's, you know, there's no turning your head, you no, know. I, and I don't know how I had, I think at a certain point I just got very stubborn about it. But I know at the point that I had been doing it about six months and just, because I, I, I had no idea how to write or frame or tell, you know, a joke. I would, and, and when I say joke, I mean the kind of thing that, Carlin did, or Klein did, or, yeah. or Richard Pryor. Yeah, it would Pryor. culminate in a laugh. Right, and, and I, I didn't relate to what they were doing as being jokes, even though they were, and I learned how to write, and honest to God, I had, I'd pulled a number, you know, you'd go, you'd pull a number on whatever day, Friday, for a Monday at the Strip, and I had this number for the Friday, and I said, well, this is it. If, if, I, don't, if I don't, you know, get somewhere tonight, I'm done. I've been doing this for six months. I'm terrible at it. And I went up and I did my thing. And I, I, it, it, it was a bit about, I think it was a bit like the first bit I had that worked about updating plots from Leave It to Beaver, you know, from the 50s to the 70s. And I had a TV guide that I'd use as a prop and everything. And, and You can I, all Google Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, really. And uh, I think everybody knows what Leave It to Be was. Like, you, and I finished. We the, like to think they do. Go ahead. I, I finished the thing, and Jerry Jerry Seinfeld, who was hosting, said, "So you want to come hang yep. out and learn to be a comic?" And I was, "Yes, I do." Oh, that's so and great! He, I mean, it was like a lifeline at the point that you I were was probably about a year before me. I think at least I was a little bit before you. Yeah, yeah. Seinfeld I, I said was, the same thing to me. Yeah, but now, the solace was you weren't the only. There was a lot of people starting out that were. Yes, so fledgling. comrades yeah. in arms is what we were. Yeah. And Bill said to me one time, uh, you know, I don't know if I can take this anymore. I don't see what value I'm getting out of going up before two people at two o'clock in the morning. What did I say? What and, was and I remember this very clearly. You said, and it was really smart. You said, you're, you're, you're not doing this to learn how to be funny. You're learning how to bomb gracefully. And there's a certain truth to that. Yeah, you, it... Uh, and then, and then I learned how to bomb. Plus, he was God jealous because he, he wasn't used to having anybody in the audience. Yeah. So you had two people. So. <laughs> yeah, well. Sometimes I would get four or six, and it would be a huge crowd. But, yes. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the beginnings of this for us were very... But that's the thing. You, you were talking about the bringers. I mean, if I had had to bring friends to see me, I'd, I'd have run out of friends after the first Impossible. night. Impossible. And nobody would have sat around to watch me develop. And I don't like I doing, doing my show with friends and family in the audience now. And I'm killing people. I don't want to forget about, you know, a million years when governors first started, my, old, my aunts were in their 80s. And my cousin brought my two 80-year-old aunts. <laughs> and I can still remember how horrified I was, and I don't think they understood a word I said, but, you, you know. You guys do realize there's something <clears throat> worse than bringer shows, which is actually paying money to go up on stage. Five dollars or ten dollars, whatever it is. And that you're making a joke. No, I'm not making a joke. That That's actually exists. What do you do, tip the doorman? No, you give it to the producer of the show. But this is really a, the, the closing of a circle for me, you know, because I started with you working for nothing, 
in the 70s and here I am <laughs> in my 60s with you. I'm still working for nothing. So, But you are going to get you a circle us. game as Joni Mitchell stand up says. memories mug. Oh, yeah. Well. But let me end with this. Courtesy I, of Gene Rayburn. <laughs> Gene Rayburn from the match game to our younger viewers and listeners. Uh, an old reference. But Jackie himself is an old reference. I have nothing for that. Okay, now we are yes. thrilled that you made the trip out I here you came from Syosset. We love you. You are. We've, a we've only gotten to the '70s. <laughs> you are so funny, and would you trade it for anything? With all of the challenges we had, with all of the two people at two fifteen in the morning, with all of the bombing, what about all the good stuff? Would you trade it for anything? I no. I I met my wife doing stand-up, and Patricia and I have been together. You, you, you met Patricia. We went to uh, Gabe Abelson's wedding together. Many moons Aww. ago. And, uh, and, and I met her working at a club, and, it's been, and it gave me a level of confidence. You know, as, as we were talking earlier, I worked in voiceovers and commercials, and I've done some theater acting, and, you know, it gave me a level of confidence and stuff that in doing things. Plus, that I, I don't know about otherwise. you, I can't imagine doing anything else rather than, you know, stand up or, or theater or movies, however, yeah. whatever it is, I call it facing the wrong way. You know, those people are looking <laughs> at us and we're facing, facing the wrong way. Facing the wrong way. That's now, good. tell McCarty he's got to come back. Please come back to, I would our, love to. to our podcast. You can do the 80s. The message here is, those of you watching and listening, if you're thinking about going into stand up comedy, you won't regret it. Will it be easy? No. But you <laughs> won't regret it, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't either. Easy, no. Rewarding, yes. Great way to end It's like show. sex and pizza. When it's bad, it's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we had a great way to end the show, and then there's that. But the you point know, is... You know... Bill McCarty... You know... Bill McCarty, terrific comedian... At least comedian. he didn't ask you about, do you dye your hair? <laughs> right. Thank you. Do you believe he dies at that color? I don't dye it. I'm, I am not sure that Pete Bales is not actually Rick Steves, but that's a whole oh, other story. Okay. I'm that's sure a, you've heard that. That's another story. I yeah. have been told that. <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, complete our show thanking Bill McCartney. Terrific. Thank you, gentlemen. Terrific Old comedian. friends. Old Jackie friends. the Joke Man Martling, who remembers Bill from uh, President McKinley's time in office. <laughs> now, is that insulting me or is that insulting McCartney? McCar it's McCart insulting McKinley. <laughs> McKinley, not M McCarty, not Paul McCartney. And uh, you babysat McKinley. I did. This has been Stand Up Memories. See, I pulled that back. What a I fun see. show, and we will see you next time.